Hello guys. Ashley here. I hope you're all enjoying learning about vasculogenesis and angiogenesis so far. But I bet you're curious to know more about angiogenesis. Right? I mean, it's important to understand the difference between the two processes. So, we don't mix them up in the future. Well, let me tell you. I'm just as excited as you are to share my knowledge with you guys. So, let's dive right in. And, learn all about angiogenesis. Without any more delay. Angiogenesis is the development of new blood vessels from existing vessels. If you remember, in the intro part of this video, I told you that angiogenesis is comparable to the creation of new connecting routes from existing highways. Now, the angiogenesis does not have a single mechanism like the vasculogenesis. Rather, it comprises of two different mechanisms that are endothelial sprouting that is in fact the sprouting of endothelial cells and intussusceptive microvascular growth or IMG for short that involves the splitting of vessel lumens by IMG don't worry if those terms sound a bit confusing I'm not going to leave you hanging without explaining these sprouting and splitting. So, let's see the sprouting first. What happens in sprouting is that when a certain area of tissue lack vasculature, undergoes hypoxia and needs nutrients, vascular endothelial growth factor or VEGF is released. Now, this VEGF activates the receptors on the endothelial cells of the existing blood vessels. So, the activated endothelial cells now secrete proteases, such as matrix metalloproteinases, or MMPs. Now, you must be thinking what these proteases do. Well, guys. These proteases break down the basement membrane that surrounds the blood vessels. This allows the endothelial cells to migrate out of the existing vessel to the surrounding tissue. This endothelial cell that is excited is known as the tip cell. Now, the migrating endothelial cells form a sprout that extend towards the stimuli. This sprout, you can see, is led by the tip cell. As the sprout advances, endothelial cells behind the tip cell proliferate further and form a stalk, which provides structural support for the sprout. So, they are referred to as stalk cells. Now, the endothelial cells in the sprout form a lumen, thus resulting in the formation of new blood vessels. The lumen allows blood flow and oxygen delivery to the surrounding tissue. So, this is how endothelial sprouting angiogenesis occurs. This is comparable to the growth of branches on a tree. Just as a tree extends its branches to reach new areas and access more resources. Now, the other one is the intussusceptive microvascular growth name is a bit difficult isn't it well we can also refer to it as the non-sprouting angiogenesis but let me break it down for you so you can understand exactly what's going on the word intussusceptive means drawing in of something and microvascular refers to the small size vessels so, the term intussusceptive microvascular growth literally means the inside folding and splitting of small blood vessels to form new vessel segments. What happens here is that a blood vessel splits into two blood vessels. Well, the process of IMG can be broken down into three stages. 
First, there's initiation. Where, a small transverse pillar, or septum, appears in the lumen of a pre-existing blood vessel. This pillar divides the vessel into two compartments, each containing a separate blood flow. Next, there's elongation, where the transverse pillar grows in length and width, eventually extending across the entire diameter of the vessel. It's like the pillar is building a wall between the two compartments of the vessel. This process is made up of endothelial cells and extracellular matrix proteins, which act as a physical barrier between the two compartments. Finally, there's resolution, where the transverse pillar is fully formed, and the two compartments of the original vessel are now separated. Blood flow continues through both compartments, and new vessels begin to form around the transverse pillar. These new vessels eventually fuse together to form a completely new blood vessel. Intersusceptive microvascular growth could be like the splitting of a river into multiple smaller channels. Just as a river can split into smaller channels. With each channel carrying a portion of the water flow. Intersusceptive microvascular growth involves the splitting of an existing blood vessel into multiple smaller vessels. Well, the scientists are still working to fully understand the molecular mechanisms behind IMG. But, it's thought to involve various signaling pathways and mechanical forces. For example, the formation of transverse pillars may be triggered by mechanical forces, such as shear stress on the vessel wall and endothelial cells may release signaling molecules like VEGF and PDGF to promote the formation of new vessels. So, that is intersusceptive microvascular growth. Now, let's take a look at three scenarios that highlight the crucial role of angiogenesis. These situations show us just how important it is for new blood vessels to form in response to various health conditions. First, during coronary artery disease, when the heart is deprived of oxygen due to poor blood flow, angiogenesis comes into play here. As new vessels form to help supply the heart with the oxygen, it needs to function properly. Second, in the case of tumors, they require a blood supply to grow and spread throughout the body. In fact, the blood vessels that form to supply the tumor can also provide an escape route for tumor cells during metastasis. To combat this, researchers are looking into using angiogenesis inhibitors as a potential treatment for cancer. Lastly, in diabetic retinopathy, angiogenesis can lead to blindness if left unchecked. The formation of new blood vessels in the eye can cause complications that affect vision, making it critical to keep angiogenesis under control. So, that was about angiogenesis. Now that we have gone through both the process of vasculogenesis and angiogenesis, let me add up that both processes are followed by the maturation of blood vessels. Parasites and smooth muscle cells are recruited to the developing vascular network, providing structural support and stability. And finally, maturing into functional blood vessels through the addition of more endothelial cells and to the deposition of extracellular matrix. That's pretty much it. I hope this has helped you differentiate between vasculogenesis and angiogenesis. Oh, you don't get them mixed up in the future. For more informative content like this, be sure to keep watching Scadia.com. Watch our medical videos anytime and anywhere. Download Scadia.com app now.